Good morning. Welcome to the Lord's house this morning. Welcome to those of you who are watching on Facebook. As usual, you can find the service on our website, uh, www.peacehewitt.org. You just click on the uh, fifth Sunday after Epiphany, which is today's uh, church day. Um, we have Holy Communion this morning, and we will be, uh, as we've been doing now for some time, you'll come down the center aisle uh, kind of one at a time. <laughs> And if you're, we'll, we'll serve this side first, and then this side will serve, be served uh, second. We also have home um, drive-through communion today for those of you who are at home. Uh, that'll that'll begin at about 10:15. Uh, Before that, I'll have some Bible class in the uh, fellowship hall. Uh, for those of you who uh, are wondering or haven't heard, uh, David Emily's uh, funeral will be next Saturday, this upcoming Saturday, the 13th at 10 o'clock here, and um, with committal out at Waco Memorial Park, and then there will be a family meal, and I'm using the word family on purpose, a family meal uh, after that in the uh, fellowship hall. If you'd like to assist with uh, the food, if you would talk to uh, Becky Ritz, she'll be uh, glad to have some assistance with the various uh, foods that are necessary. This morning we uh, begin by singing Awake My Soul and With the Sun. Would you please stand and give each other a nice greeting and we'll go on our way. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. The Lord heals the brokenhearted. And binds up their wounds. Great is our Lord, and abundant in power. O oh God, you have come to call us even to call even us to repentance and faith, to salvation and life. We confess and repent of our sins, especially our spiritual blindness and our small and selfish concerns. Lord, have mercy. We have tried to keep our faith a private concern, seeking your blessings only for ourselves. Lord, have mercy. We have neglected prayer and concern for the world and need around us. The Lord gives power to the faint, and to him he, who has no might, he increases strength. On this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Lord, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in this stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We speak this intro together from Psalm 13. I will sing to the Lord, because he has dealt bountifully with me. Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Write up my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. 
Lest my enemies say, I have prevailed over him. Lest my foes rejoice because I am shaken. But I have trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will sing to the Lord, because he has dealt bountifully with me. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the gift of divine peace and a pardon, with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. The Holy Christian Church, here and scattered throughout the world, for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For seasonable weather and for fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For those who labor, those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For all those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and orphaned, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the sick and dying, for all those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For these and all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help save and Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, keep your family and the church continually in the true faith, that relying on the hope of your heavenly grace, we may be ever defended by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. first reading is from Isaiah 40. Do you not know? Do you not hear? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, and spreads them like a tent to dwell in, who brings princes to nothing, and makes the rulers of the earth as emptiness. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown. Scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth. When he blows on them and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me, that I should be like him, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host by number, calling them all by name, by the greatness of his might. And because he is strong in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? 
My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youth shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait, wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians 9. For if I preach the gospel, that gives me no ground for boasting. For necessity is laid upon me. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. For if I do, this is my own will. I have a reward. But not of my own will. I am still entrusted with a stewardship. What then is my reward? That is my preaching I may present the gospel free of charge so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. For though I am free from all, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law I became as one under the law, though not being myself under the law, that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law I became as one outside the law, not being outside the law of God, but under the law of Christ, that I might win those outside the law. To the weak I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that by all means I might save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, that I may share with them in its blessings. Do you not know that in a race all the runners compete, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air, but I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I find myself disqualified. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Immediately Jesus left the synagogue and entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law lay ill with a fever, and immediately they told him about her. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown they brought to him all who were sick or oppressed by demons, and the whole city was gathered together at the door. And he healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak, because they knew him. And rising very early in the evening, in the morning, I'm sorry, while it was still dark, he departed and went out to a desolate place, and there he prayed. And Simon and those who were with him searched for him, and they found him and said to him, Everyone is looking for you. And he said to them, Let us go on to the next towns, that I may preach there also. For that is why I came out. And they went throughout, he went throughout all Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and casting out demons. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise you may be seated with the children, please come forward.
good morning. When I was a kid, tell me about your age, there was a television commercial. And in this television commercial, there was a poor, there was a boy who had been the goalie. You know what a goalie does? He protects the goal. And unfortunately, because he didn't protect the goal, the, ga- the team lost the game. And so he's walking off the field, and his dad comes up to him, and his dad says to him something like, uh, I'm so sorry that this happened to you. And he offered him a lifesaver, what are called mintagreens. And he said, here, if you have this, you'll feel better. So I'll give you one. You can have it later. Do you think... Do you, well, that's probably good, because do you think that this really was going to make him feel better? In fact, afterwards, the father says, well, you know, when I dropped the football when I was in high school and we lost the big game, um, my, I had to have a whole roll of them. <laughs> and the, the boy turns to his dad and says, well, can I have the rest of the roll? <laughs> but do you really think that this will make you feel better when you, when you feel really, really blue, really down? No, it's, it's all right. But why do they call them lifesavers? I mean, is this going to save your life? No, it's not going to save your life. It kind of looks like those rings that they used to throw out off of ships when somebody would fall in the water. I guess that's where it gets its name, but this isn't going to save anybody's life. What saves your life? If, if, you're, if you're in big trouble, what saves your life? Who? A person. Okay, that's probably good. Let's, let's try to narrow it down for more than any person to God, Jesus Christ. What In the gospel lesson, there's all kind of people who are sick, including Peter's mother-in-law. Now, I don't think Jesus went around handing out mints and said, here, eat this mint and you'll feel better. Is that what he does? No, he saves them. He heals them. Actually, that word is used kind of for both meanings in the Bible. To save someone is to heal someone, and to heal someone is to save someone. They're kind of the same thing in God's eyes. Um, And he goes and he heals Peter's mother-in-law, and then it says, everybody else in the village came. So you can just see everybody in the little town, it wasn't very big, Capernaum was, but everybody in the little town is coming to the house they were living in, and they're standing there, kind of like in one, one after another, I guess, crowding in, trying to get whatever it is was wrong with them healed. And Jesus is back there handing out mini-greens, right? <laughs> no. He's handing out, he's handing out help. But he's also handing out salvation. He's handing out You come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest, he says. He's handing out to them, and he hands out to us eternal salvation. And no mint is ever going to do it. What's going to do it is believing in Jesus. And those people believe, that's why they came that night to be healed. You can go sit down.
Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. And do you have the next slide? Yes, there, thank you. In uh, Sweden, uh, on, a, on the coastline of Sweden, is a church by the name of Sofia Albertina Kirka. And uh, that's the picture that's over the altar in the church. It's a picture by a guy named Karl Block, that's why I put that there. And he did it in 1875. And he's trying to show the gospel lesson this morning. Well, obviously you have Jesus there, uh, uh, standing in the middle with his hands up, raised up in, in a prayer-like blessing format. But look at the people down below. One guy in, in the yellow there is kind of snuggled up to Jesus. And one, one child, just a little bit above him, is kind of peeking out at us, like, what's going to happen? And the woman is praying in the back, and then on the other side, you've got someone uh, looking at Jesus, and then that, that last figure, the one with the red, is almost hugging him, almost knocking him over like a small child does. And the name of this picture is Christ the Consoler. Christ the Consoler. We don't use the word consoler much anymore. Usually when I hear the word console, I'm thinking of a consolation prize. You know what a consolation prize is? It means you lost. It means you didn't win. You weren't the winner of, the, of the, whatever the athletic thing was or whatever kind of a competition it was. You came in maybe second, but in some cases, consolation prizes are given to everybody except the, except the winner. And when someone says, I'm going to be your consoler, a lot of people would think, well, are you going to tell me that I'm a loser? Are you going to tell me that I'm no good? Well, yeah, you are. I am going to say that. You are a loser. You are no good. By yourself, without Jesus, you're a loser. You're no good. St. Paul talks about in the gospel um, that we should run the race so that we can get this wreath, the eternal wreath. Well, the truth is, half the time, we're not even on the track. We're off doing our own thing. Or we're shadow boxing, he talks about. And he says, I pray that I, I, I follow through so that even when I get done preaching, I don't lose. I don't become a loser. St. Paul, he worries about that. I don't know if he worries about it, but he's aware, probably is a better way of saying it. He's aware that without Jesus, we would all be losers. And so... We need someone to console us. Now, the word console or consoler does not really have anything to do with sports things, really. It has to do with coming to someone who's hurting and telling them it's going to be better or in some way assisting them. And that's what Jesus does here in the Gospel lesson. We're told immediately after what happened last week in our readings. Immediately after he was in the, in the Sabbath, on the Sabbath, teaching, and he also came up against a man who had an unclean spirit, immediately after that, he goes to the home of Andrew and Peter and James and John are there as well. And when they get to the home, which was probably not very far, I mean, we're talking about very short distances, less than a mile probably, when he gets to the home, he finds out that Peter's mother-in-law has got a fever. Gospel Luke says it's a high fever. It's a real fever. It's not just that bland, I don't feel good kind of fever. It's the kind of fever that's a threat. It's the kind of fever that, especially pre, pre-antibiotics, probably said there was something really going wrong. And she's lying in bed. And what does Jesus do? 
He doesn't hang out a mint. He doesn't wait for someone to ask him to do anything. We're told he came, he took her by the hand, and lifted her up. And fever left her, and she began to serve them. So once he finds out what's going on, he just goes and takes care of it. He just goes, takes her by the hand, lifts her up, and she's feeling so good that she can take care of everybody else. How about you? When I have a fever break, all I want to do is lay around. I mean, it's like I'm zapped because my body's been fighting off whatever it was I was, I was uh, infected with. Not, she's not infected with anything anymore. She's not in any way, in any way, affected by whatever that fever was. And she's able to get up and take care of them. And then we're told that evening at sundown, of course, the Sabbath ended at sundown, so you couldn't travel much um, up until then, but at sundown, now the whole village comes. The whole village is wanting their, their loved ones to have their sicknesses healed and to have their demons cast out. Now, we don't know what types of sicknesses they had, and we're really not clear, it's not altogether clear why Capernaum was full of a bunch of people who had demons. But it is totally clear that Jesus doesn't sit there and say, well, I'm sorry, I would go home, I won't, I, I, I'm tired, worked all day, you know, some other day we'll take it up. Is that what he does? No. He consoles them. He heals their diseases, whatever they were. He casts out the demons, for which are there for whatever reason. He restores them. And they're no longer in any way ill or in any way affected by Satan and his minions. And then we're told... Well, apparently it's nighttime, so after they finally leave, overnight, they probably slept a few hours, but he gets up early in the morning, before everybody else, before actually the sun's up, he goes off to pray. And Simon Peter wakes up and is like, what? where's Jesus? We got more people gathering at the door. There's more work to be done. Everybody's looking for you, he says, when he finds Jesus. But the, you, you can't stop now. And Jesus says, let's go on to other villages. Let's go on to other places. They need this just as much as the people of Capernaum. And we're told that he went out through all Galilee. Which again is not a huge place, but throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and casting out demons. Because he knows it's not a problem that's located in Capernaum. It's really not a problem that's just located in Galilee, for that matter. It's a problem located in us. We are sick, sometimes physically but always spiritually without Jesus. We are always sick spiritually without Jesus. We may feel pretty good physically, I'm in good mood, everything's working right, no, no aches and pains, although that never happens to me anymore, I don't know about you, but um, we feel, we, 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 okay, everything's great, but the truth is, we're always sick spiritually without Jesus. And we need him to come and console us. To come and say to us, I will restore you. And so when this artist, 
who was actually commissioned by the king. Um, interesting, it was a Danish king. It's in Sweden. It's one of those times when Dane, the Danes overrule Sweden. But anyways, well, when that was painted, where did they put it? They put it in the wall right above the altar. It's called an altar piece. They put it on the wall, right? The altar's right below it, and there's the picture. Because they knew that where do you come to get at least your spiritual sickness healed? You come to Jesus. And Jesus heals our sicknesses. It says in Isaiah, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. He carries our sorrows. He consoles us through body and blood in, with, and under bread and wine. He consoles us as we hear God's word. And God's word says to us what? You're not a loser anymore. You know, the only loser in all of humanity was one guy. And no one came to console him. One guy. Well, John was there. He, he was watching. So he was at both of these events. But one guy was the loser. God made him who knew no sin to be sin for us. St. Paul will write in 2 Corinthians. That one guy will take all of our sicknesses, our griefs, our sins, our, our terrible things that we think of and do, and he carries them for us. And God, God the Father isn't even there to help. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So we're not losers anymore. We don't need a consolation prize. We just need consolation. We don't need, a, we don't need to get somebody to give us something to say, hey, oh, it's, it's too bad you, you lost, but you know, here, like, this might make you feel better. You didn't lose. Jesus lost on our behalf. In his name, amen. And now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. We uh, continue with the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation, fell from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. Then he rose again according to the Scripture ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
In our prayers this morning, we remember um, Robin and Mitch Fryman. They were in a uh, car accident, that, a rear-ended accident. They were badly jolted, no, no major injuries, but their whole body's been jolted. If you've ever been in one of those, you know how that feels. We also pray for uh, Kate Bartlett, a family member of the Eldridges, who's having a, di a very difficult pregnancy, and we ask that the Lord would bless her during this time. We pray for Tom Petty, um, Amanda Reinke, uh, Kevin's uh, uh, father-in-law, who uh, has, has had a heart attack and a stroke, is in Scott and White down in Temple. And of course, we pray for uh, uh, Dave, the family of Dave Emily, who, as you know, was called home this last week. Let us pray. Let us pray to the Lord who has dealt bountifully with us. We give thanks to you, dear Father, for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh, that through him the gospel has been preached, casting out the works of Satan and the corruption of sin, which we could not overcome. By your word, rescue us from every evil of body and soul. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Lord of the church, give joy to your servants, to whom you have laid the necessity to preach the gospel, that by your means many will be saved in every nation, and that together we may share in the blessings of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Heavenly Father, give to all Christian homes the endurance that comes from your Holy Spirit, that husbands and wives, parents and children may be disciplined and self-controlled in their duties, run their course in this life, and continue to the end in the holy Christian faith, ready to receive the imperishable wreath of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Your Almighty God, creator of the world and its foundation, you hold might over the powers of nature and the rulers of the earth. Graciously preserve our land, its produce, and our industry, and our leaders together with all our people. Do not disregard us for our sins, but renew us, that our lives may be peaceful and our country govern according to your will. Lord, in your mercy. Your Son, O Lord, is the great physician of body and soul, at whose hand demons, diseases, and every ill effect of sins are turned away. We bring before you those, for those and anyone who is in need, especially pray for Robin and Mitch, for Tom and for Kate. We bring before you the, their names, and we ask, O Lord, that you would hear their prayers. Lord, in your mercy. Your Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you are, the great, you are also the, the great Savior of all mankind, and we give thanks for the life of David Emily, Emily, who served you so well. And now we ask, O Lord, you would bless his family as they mourn his passing. Give them, give them strength and give them courage, that trusting in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, they will know that they will see him again when he is brought back to life. Lord, in your mercy. Your Holy Father, where there is the forgiveness of sins, there is also life and salvation. Bring us in such faith to your holy sacrament that the blood of Christ, which atoned for our sins, may make us whole. Strengthen us against every spiritual attack of the devil. Turn us in love toward our neighbor and preserve us in body and soul to life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in... Oh, I'm sorry. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. What have been hidden before the foundation of the world, you have made known to the nations in your Son. In him being found in the substance of our mortal nature, you have manifested the fullness of your glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. The same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shed for the forgiveness of your sins. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in faith to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Take and eat. This is the very body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Take and drink. This is the precious blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in true faith and for life everlasting. Depart in peace. Take and eat the very body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Take and eat the very body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Take and eat the very body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Take and eat the very body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Lord bless and keep you, Charlotte. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the very body of Christ. Lord bless and keep you, Caitlin. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you.
I can eat the body of Christ given for you. I can eat the body of Christ given for you. I can eat the body of Christ given for you. I can eat the body of Christ given for you. I can eat the body of Christ given for you. I can eat the body of Christ given for you. I can eat the body of Christ given for you. I can eat the body of Christ given for you. I can eat the body of Christ given for you. Bless and keep you shining. I can eat the body of Christ given for you. I can eat the body of Christ given for you. I can eat the body of Christ given for you. I can eat the body of Christ given for you. I can eat the body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Thanks be to God. The body of Christ given for you. 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 Body of Christ given for you. I can eat the body of Christ given for you. I can eat the body of Christ given for you. Now may this body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. pray. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who with loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. We ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, 
one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. <laughs> Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Glad that you could worship me with me here. We have a good, good sized group this morning. I'm right. glad to see that. Also, those of you who are wa worshiping on uh, Facebook, uh, Becky's here. I suspect she has some things to say about the meal. Good morning. Um, I want to, first of all, I want to thank everyone who has already signed up to bring food for the meal on Saturday. We still need more vegetable dishes and uh, more salads. And I will be out at the high top table in the narthex after the service if you would like to stop by and sign up. Thank you. So as I said, the service will be on, on uh, Saturday at 10. You can go to the funeral home, Pecan Grove, over in, uh, on 77 in the uh, Robinson area of, of Waco uh, for visitation on Friday night from 5 until 7. Are there any other announcements? Uh, Lois? Oh, sure. Okay. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Clara. Happy birthday to you. That's good. <laughs> 
Thank you, Lois. And happy birthday. She's turning red as a beak, but uh, that's okay. Uh, anything else? The Lord be with you.